Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back to my channel, The County For Real. I am a County For Real, but this is the Cheryl Hubbard Show. So today, I'm just going to do a little practicing on my keyboard. It's my book right here. It's called Piano for the Young Beginner. And this is a, you know, it's a children's book. It's a children's book, you know. I'm not a young beginner, but I am a beginner. So, you know... <laughs> But, um, you know, my keyboard right here. So that's my silent night. So I don't know what I did with my, my notes to my, uh, song. I don't know what I did with my notes to my song, but I have this book. I'm trying to follow along. But first, what I want to do, I have, um, I have my, you know, my usual. This is a cottage cheese peaches, the hood, hood peaches, and so, so this is a brand new one, you know, brand new one. So. Take it off. This is how the inside looks. Cottage cheese with peaches. So, you know, cottage cheese with peaches. Got to have that energy. So I want to say, first of all, today's Sunday. I want to give honor to God. And God, thank you. Thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for starting me on my way. Thank you for giving me the strength and energy to do the things that I do every day on a daily basis. God, uh, thank you for blessing me. Thank you for all the blessings, many blessings in my life, myself, my family, my friends, uh, friends, good quality friends, um, trustworthy friends, good family members, strong, uh, trustworthy uh, family, family, you know, family and friends. So, but I also want to thank, you know, God for, you know, I'm thanking God for everything that you allowed me to do. I'm able to get up and uh, make these, uh, create these uh, great videos. I mean, my opinion, they're great to me. My approval, they meet my approval. So, you know, I want to thank God for giving me the strength and the energy to be able to get up daily on a daily basis to do, you know, to do these things and do to do everything that I do in life. Uh, take care of my family. Uh, maintain, um, you know, a place to live. Pay my bills, maintain a place to live, uh, provide my family uh, with what they need, and also, uh, you know, being around for your family, your family being around for you. So this is, uh, and also, God, uh, I want to thank you for, you know, you, you, gave, you give me the strength every day to do the things that I do, and also, I'm just thankful because this today, right now, as I speak on this video, this is my, this is my 100th video. On my YouTube channel, so it was 99 before this one, but this make my 100th video. So it's my anniversary today. So my YouTube anniversary. And this is one of my 100th video. So I'm gonna keep on moving. I have to still move on and you know proceed on. Uh, you know, so 100. I never thought I would get here to 100 videos because I wasn't. You know, I was wondering how in the world, what type of videos can I create? You know. But, you know, on a daily basis, different ideas come to my mind. It's just like running a business. You're running a business. You're running a brand. You're running your tra channel. You have to treat your channel like it's your business, your brand. You're building your brand. You know, you want good quality, uh, you know, good quality videos. Not a lot of raunchy stuff, you know, where you're doing all this uh, crazy stuff on your channel. You know, I don't choose to do all that. I try to provide quality quality videos, you know, uh, I'm building a brand, I want to build a brand that people can trust, so when they come to my channel, they know that they can trust the content in my channel, my channel is not going to be, you know, uh, providing a whole lot of crazy talk and, you know, cussing and all that type of stuff, so I'm trying to provide, you know, good quality videos, so today, today, actually, to this video here, it's my 100th video, here on YouTube, so this is the uh, 
and we signed out as the accounting for real channel now it is the uh cheryl hubby show so the cheryl hubby show i changed the name i rebranded changed the name provide different content you know so i want a variety of videos i just didn't want to do just accounting but i will still be providing accounting tutorials business tutorials uh, cooking segments, uh, how-to videos, or whoever, I mean, who knows what I may run across as far as how-to. I might want to tell you, I might have a video tell you how you make a million dollars. I might have a video tell you how you can, you know, I did how to do my ponytail. So how-to, you know, those videos are very popular. So I'm just, you know, just doing a daily basis, just doing my research. So this is my uh, hood. I want to put a little bit in here, but I want um, my motto is I never like to eat out. So when I buy them big like this, uh, I don't eat out the whole thing, you know, put it in something else because somebody else might want some. So what I do, uh, I take my spoon, I take my spoon and I put some in, you know, clean container. I'll just put a little bit in here. I have that. And then I'll put the top. Put the top back on this one. Put this in the fridge. And uh, then also I have my uh I have my lala. You know, I always try to have my lala available. So when your voice gets dry, your mouth gets dry, you say, hey, you know, and you know, instead of drinking out the I don't, you know, I don't believe in all that. Drinking out of I mean you can, but well, it's cool, but I like to put my, you know, I take mine, you know, put it in the glass. Put it all in the glass, because you don't get that much. I think this is like, uh, uh, this is only seven. Seven, seven ounces. Mm-hmm. Only seven ounces. So, you know, I like to put a little bit in here and just, you know, sip on it. You don't have to drink it all at one time, so... As I said, this is my 100th video here on my YouTube channel. So let me see. And I got my little keyboard set up here. Just want to practice a little bit. I'm see if I, I don't know if the sound and night is in here. Uh, let me see. Let me see what songs we have in this book. Oh, Jack and Jill. Uh, oh, McDonald is in here. Uh, old McDonald's, so let me see. So, in this book, they do have, um, that's how that is. Old McDonald's, they give you notes and everything, and tell you, give you the notes and tell you what keys to put. So, I have my little thing right here. So, Old McDonald is, it looks like C, 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 G. Uh, 
Uh, this is a oh, middle C position. Oh, I want you to use the middle C, the middle C position. So the middle C would be this one. So, but what G do you use? Oh, you gotta go back to the G to the left. Oh, okay, okay. So it's uh. business, I guess. So, this is at the end of the keyboard. That's a different tone. Then you come up here. And then I come up here. See how it all gets? That's like bass. So uh, later on, once I learn how to play it, then I said, really don't need me to get no special keyboard right now. I know my son had a Yamaha one time, but, um, you know, but this one right here, it's just something for me to practice on, okay? And I gotta learn how to play it first, you know. Not an expensive one, so you know, but 
later on I will try, baby. You know, maybe I get something. But um, so oh uh, yeah, so this is real nice, man, real good. Um, this is a winner. So they do have different flavors. So you know, try them. So when they came out with these right here, I saw them. I saw them on a commercial. I saw it on a commercial and I said, you know what? I definitely have to try those, baby. Yeah, because, you know, eat these. And sometimes, before you pick up those steak and potatoes, and that rice, that fried rice, steak and potatoes, sometimes before you pick up those, and that, those uh, type of items, you know, hamburger, I mean, chicken and chicken and fish is probably about the best. You know, chicken, fish, and turkey, and you bake them. So I do try to uh, bake my food some sometimes. Um, so, uh, see, the thing is, when you pick up food, when you're hungry, you tend to pick up the wrong thing. That's the, that's the wrong thing we do. I do it sometimes, too. Sometimes, sometimes you're out in the street, you're shopping, you blah, 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 you're hungry. First thing you want to do is hit the fast food. Fast food joints, you know, french fries, uh, usually if I go to McDonald's or something, I try to get a fish sandwich. I usually try to get a fish sandwich because uh, uh, really, I don't even eat hamburgers. I've been stopped eating hamburgers and steaks, cut all that out years ago. Uh, but, you know, they say there's nothing wrong with, um, what you call it, um, um, you know, uh, you know, when you don't eat it that much, but you may, uh, you know, uh, you may eat every now and then. So, you know. So, uh. Well, this is so good. I can almost eat the whole thing. So, what, if you eat a whole thing like this? And, um, let's see how many calories on here. If you eat a whole thing, you won't have to eat no food. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a fool. Okay, the, the, uh, nutritional facts. Four servings per container. Uh, it says uh, four servings per container, so uh, calories per serving. So four serving servings per container. So in other words, this container is four servings. So that means it's 110 calories per serving. So you got to multiply 110 by four. So you're talking about 440. So this whole thing would give me 440 calories if I eat the whole thing. But I just put a little bit in there, see? I just put a little bit in there out of the big one. Uh, so, uh, then uh, it doesn't have any fiber. Uh, but it does have fat, 1% fat, uh, no, no trans fat, and 3% cholesterol. Uh, but the sodium will get you 13% sodium, uh, 13 grams of sugar. Uh, 18 grams of added sugar, 20% uh, protein, but it has no no fibers, zero fibers, 5% total carbs, 5% carbs, but um, I know Dr. Oz on his show was saying, it's good for you, but he don't like it to have too much, you know, too much fruit. But, um, that fruit gives you the taste. That fruit in here, the peaches, gives you the kick that you need. I can just eat this all day, and I don't even need no hamburgers or steak and chicken and all that. I don't need it. I can eat, I can eat one big one like this. This is high before. That'd be 440 calories. If I ate this whole thing, that'd be 440 calories. So, you know, it is what it is, but uh, sometimes you have to, you know, like I said, get out and you do your little workout. And so it's, it's so good, you know, that is so delicious, but I'm so proud of myself. This is my 100th video today, March the 1st. my notes for that so I'm just gonna read some stuff out of the book I don't have my notes to so I know what's keys to you know 
But um, you know, it's my son's keyboard, but I'm just working on it. Um, my son's keyboard. So this is gonna be a little bit out of the book, but first I can do a little talking, okay? Because this what I'm gonna be reading is gonna be it's called competing, competing in a global marketplace. So first I'll just talk about you know business. You run in a business, you know, you have everything you need. I have my remote for my Raku box, uh which fix my channel. So you have a business. Um you have a business, you're running a business, you know, whatever type of business you want to run, you know. Uh, like I said, you can just run a business like, uh, you know, makeup. Like Kylie Jenner. Kylie Jenner, she built a billion dollar empire on just makeup. Then now she's um, uh, expanded her uh, product line. So, uh, she expanded her product line. So, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. You know, if you can find that niche, if you if not, well, you can find right. If you can find that niche that everybody wants, and you can find that where your target market is, and you know you had the right niche, you have what people want, then that's how you can draw your customers in. So you can make, you can build that empire to that billion dollar empire. And uh, Jessica Simpson, she built a billion dollar empire. Uh, selling pocketbook shoes and coats and different things, and uh, and the lady that uh, I forgot her name, but she runs an artist company, and she have uh, I ordered some stuff from her, uh, honest diapers, you know, for babies and different uh, creams and you know different products. So she built a billion dollar empire on sale. So that's what business is the way to go. Excuse me, business is the way to go. But I know everyone is not interested in business because sometimes, right, you have to know, like, every, everything ever you say, you, know, you have to know how to sell. You have to know how to sell, you have to know how to attract those customers. Uh, if you have what the customer wants and it's at a fair price and at a convenient location, they might be apt to purchase. But sometimes your name. Sometimes your name, uh, you know, if your name is popular, then you know you you stand a you stand a stand to have an advantage over somebody like me just trying to sell. Now, who do you think they're gonna buy? Who do you think they buy? If I'm selling shoes, they buy from from me or Jessica Simpson? Really? <laughs> you know, so if your name is already popular. You you know then you know you have an advantage over people like me, small time. So. That's how they go in the business world. And then also, that's what they call celebrity marketing. They put uh, they, they put these celebrities' name on these tennis shoes, and then people running by them. So put my name on a pair of tennis shoes, see if anybody... <laughs> so put my name on a pair of tennis shoes, and see if anybody buy them. Is anybody going to run to the store? You think they're going to line up around the corner? No, sometimes, I mean, I'm proud of all the athletes and everything that, you know, so, but that's, that's, a, that's a business, business marketing strategy move, you know, if you can use celebrity name, celebrity marketing, and, um, that way you can pull in money in your company, then why not do it? I probably, I probably would do the same, so I can't fault nobody for doing that. You know, if I had, if I was running a company, and, um, I had a product and I and I talked to some of the celebrities and I said, hey, you know what? Let me can I put your name on my products? So that way it'll pull in sales for my company. So that's the that's the game. They want to pull in sales for their company. So in other words, Nike shoes uh, have a deal. You know, they have a deal with certain celebrities. They put their name on their shoes and that's how they get more sales. And we we the ones running out there paying all this money for shoes and different things, and we the ones that need money. We can stand. We need a few million. <laughs> really? <laughs> yep. We need a few million. How can we get a few million? That's what I want to know. How can I start bringing in those millions in my businesses, in my business that I want to run? So, running a business, you have, uh, 
Your business name, your license, you know, basically everything you need. Because, see, I run it, I run the same list down every time I run it uh, on my, all my videos. But I don't mind, you know, because it refreshes my own memory. But that's why I do it. Refresh my memory. Refresh my memory. So, in other words, I have my business. I might have a business, say I'm selling uh, tires. I could be selling tires to a car, or I could be selling cars, for that matter. Uh, you know, because Coons, Chevrolet, and Hanker, and BMW, and Corolla, and different companies, you know, they're making big time money. They've been in business for years. So, uh, uh, my business, I'm running, I say, for instance, I'm selling tires, and I'm selling them worldwide. And I'm very popular. So, you know, I'm selling seven tires. I'm very popular worldwide. So I have my business name. I have my licenses. I have, you know, I have a company worldwide. It's worldwide. I, have, I mean, you know, I offer online sales. I, I have a, I have a business, uh, what you call a storefront in every state. Well, I'm making billions, you know. I have a business storefront in every state. Those are my tires. Or, you know, you can also order online. So then uh, I'm building my brand, I have my niche, my target market. Uh, I already had my diverse work, I already had my diverse work, uh, workers, diverse, I already, I already had my, uh, workers from a diverse, uh, group. Uh, you know, so I'm creating that competitive advantage. And so, and it's, the items that I'm about to read is some different terms and some new terms that they're not new, but they're terms I hadn't heard in a while. So I, I always talk about competitive advantage, but there's another term here called comparative advantage. So you have everything you need in your business. You're building your brand. You're building your brand. You you know, uh, you're trying to build up that trust. You're trying to build up that trust. You're creating a quality product. You're creating that uh, uh, quality uh, service, trustworthy service, and a trustworthy product. So the products you sell, you have, you want your customers to be able to trust in your brand, trust in you, your personal brand, your, your company brand. Um, you want to um, you want to hire managers, employees that that stand that help you and your company stand up to your name, your company's name, and your company brand. You want to hire, you know, you want to hire uh, employees that help you stand up to your company. Well, they, you know, basically, you want them to stand up to your company name and your company brand. So, um, that's it. You have everything. You have everything you need. So, then, you know, uh, then you want to go global. You want to go international. You want to sell your products all over the world, you know. Um, uh, sell your products all over the world. And, uh, so building that brand is very important. You might want to co-brand. You might want to have certain, uh, uh, products. Uh, you might offer certain products that use that same particular brand name. Uh, so, in other words, you want to go. You want that um, competitive advantage. You want competitive pricing. Uh, you want uh, you want to bring in uh, yeah. You want those competitive prices, and you all you want you want your employees to be able to uh, get along. In that diverse workplace environment, you want your customers, your employees, to be able to get it on. Uh, so you also want, you know, competitive prices, uh, competitive, um, you know, the diverse workforce, workplace environment. You want that to create uh, uh, the competitive advantage because you want, uh, you know, because they bring different skills, different different knowledge, different skills about different things, different knowledge. You know, some of them may have tech. Uh, broad technology skills. Some of them may have uh, human skills, people skills. You know, see, managers definitely have to have people skills because they not only have to have technology skills, but they have to have people skills. They have to know how to treat people. They have to know how people act to certain in certain situations. You know, then uh, when you hire and do the employees, that's why they uh, sometimes. Uh, before you get certain jobs, they may take you through a little questionnaire. So, um, you know, and the questions may be going in the line of, leading in the line of, like, hey, you know, what would you do if this if this happened? What would you do if that happened? What, do we, what would you do if this happened? You know, questions like that. They want to know how you would react in certain situations. 
Cause then they, they act like they can tell you, they act like they can tell you how you would have answered those questions. You know, uh, cause I know my brother, he, um, he said he applied for this job one time and they, you know, the, the entrance, it was like, it was like an entrance test. So he failed the test because he said they told him that he only answered the questions the way they, they thought that he wanted them to answer the questions. And how can you tell somebody that? So that's what he said. And so he didn't get the job. And I'm like, really? He said they told him he failed the test because he answered the questions. He answered the questions uh, with the answers that they wanted him to come up with. In other words, they wanted him to come up with certain answers. So he said that they, they you know, he, that's the way he answered the questions, the way, uh, you know, with the responses. The way they wanted him to uh, to answer, you know, the questions, the responses that he gave. So I'm like, how can you tell somebody that? And how can you know what's in that person's mind? So they that was just an excuse for you that they won't give you their job. That's what it was. You can't tell nobody. I ain't gonna tell somebody how that they answered the questions the way they thought the employer wanted them to answer the questions. No, how can you say that? You don't know what's in my mind. You don't know I answered the question. You don't know whether I answered them truthfully or I just, you know, thought about them or off the top of my head or how, you don't know. So that was that. But, you know, he went on and moved on and got other jobs. So sometimes you do have to move on. You have to move on to get other jobs. And there are other opportunities out here. You just have to find them. So that is that. So, you know, uh, you know, running a business. Global, international, uh, creating a competitive advantage, uh, building those information systems, or even putting together an information system, you know, so you bring that information in. Managers need information that comes under managerial accounting, uh, financial accounting, uh, uh, outside uh, people, outside decision makers need information, auditors, creditors, uh, credit unions. You know, they need that outside information uh, on your company. So, you know, make sure you do your accounting books, your accounting books at a particular time, at the end of the accounting cycle. So you have, uh, you know, technology. You got to bring technology into your organization. So if, uh, you know, you do a little benchmarking and see what your competitors are doing. Say, for instance, I'm running in uh, uh well, I'm selling cars. I could be, I don't know. Car lot in every state. Um, the name of my cars are. I mean, my car dealership could be. You know, I can. I can also sell uh, Corollas too if I want to. Cheryl's Corollas. Uh, Cheryl's Corollas M uh, LLC. So you know, you can't stop nobody from selling Corollas. I just have to find out where I can go get a shipment of Corollas, so I can put them on my lot. You know, I buy them at a certain price. I might go out and buy. A million, maybe I go out and buy a million Corollas, and I put them in different car lots around the, around my state, or around four or five different states. I have a million Corollas, Cheryl's, Cheryl's um, Corolla, Corolla, Cheryl's Corolla sales, LLC, you know. And what I want to do is, I want to make sure I create that competitive advantage. So what will stop? Uh, customers from coming to me, to my company, my car dealership, and buying a Corolla as opposed to going to another car dealership and buying a Corolla. I have to find a way to draw my customers in. What can I have to offer that I want to benchmark and see what these other Corolla dealerships are doing so I can do something different and much better. So I can draw in customers, you know. I can probably uh, offer much lesser competitive prices when they sell their Corollas for across the country uh maybe Coons or somebody selling their Corollas for their brand new Corollas for what thirteen thousand thirteen nine 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 I, I can probably price mine much lower than that just to pull in those customers so you know what you want a Corolla and then uh different ads TV ads uh commercials you know uh, that way people can, you know, see what you're offering. 
So I know I see a lot of commercials on uh, Coons Coro Corolla. They they seem like oh yeah, but I see some other uh, commercials. You know, advertising their uh, Corollas. Well, they 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 do have some um, nice uh, you know commercials. I know my brother. Uh, I mean, my son he bought a um, Corolla from Coons before some years ago. So the car was real nice. It was brand new when he got it. So brand new. They look very nice when they're brand new. Um, so that's how they go. So, you know, you're building your business and building your brand. Building your brand, benchmarking to see what other companies are doing. So like I said, I'm running that dealership. Uh, Cheryl's uh, uh, Corolla. Uh, Cheryl's Corolla. Uh, I'm selling uh, uh, my Corollas and um Selling them all across the world, globally and internationally. I have an online presence, and I have storefronts all around. I'm benchmarking to see what the other Corolla companies are doing, other Corolla, uh, Corolla car dealerships are doing, so I can do something better. Who knows when they come in my Corolla establishment? Uh, I mean, I would have to be innovative. That's the thing with business. Apple, you know, they've been innovative over the years, so that's why they have been made to be that's why they have made themselves very popular with the people every time you turn around they coming out every so often they've been innovative they're keeping your eyes they're keeping your attention you know every six months or something like that they come out maybe with a new phone or a new feature or something for this phone and this phone their phone do this and it does this and does that you know so you be innovative that's all about business so um let me see so i'm gonna read a few little things out of the book So, and here it says, competing in the global marketplace, selling Saturn in Japan. As I was just talking about cars. Uh, General Motors Corp's Saturn division came to Japan and uh, to Japan on a mission to break into the Japanese automobile market. So far, the the gong ho effort has been a flop. Unlike other foreign auto manufacturers, which position their cars as uh, upscale novelty, I novelty items, Saturn's strategy was to compete with Japanese rivals on their home turf by introducing the Saturn as an everyday car. Saturn adopted, adapted its U.S. model to the needs of Japanese consumers by installing right-hand drive steering and adding folding side mirrors, practic practically a necessity on Japan's narrow streets. So in other words, they try to be innovative and installing uh, these different things in their car, maybe that another car didn't have. Other car dealerships maybe didn't have, might didn't have. So it says, which position their cars as upscale novelty items. So it's a uh, Saturn strategy. See, Saturn strategy. So you got to have a strategy. You want to try to do something with your dealership and your cars that the other dealerships are not doing. So Saturn strategy was to compete with Japanese rivals on their home uh, turf by introducing the Saturn as, as an everyday car. Saturn adapted its U.S. model to the needs of Japanese consumers by installing right-hand drive steering and adding folding side mirrors. So you got the folding side mirrors that fold in so another car comes through there and it can't side swipe you. So, you know, I know on my husband's car, his BMW, when I'm parking, uh, when I'm backing up, the mirror goes down to the curb. So it's very neat, very nice. The mirror goes down to the curb so I can see the curb while I'm parking. Yep. It says Saturn also established its own dealership network to set itself apart from other imports. That's how you do it. You want to set yourself apart. Uh... It said, can a U.S. automaker ever be more than a niche player in Japan? Uh, so just imagine, I have my, my uh, Corollas and I'm over in different uh, different countries, you know, Japan, um, Africa, you know, different continents, Africa, Asia, Europe, you know, different continents, different countries. Uh, so, you know, that is uh, the marketing strategy. It's all about getting out there to the people. The people have to see, people can't see what you have if you don't get out there and put your uh, products out there where they can see them. Everybody don't go online. You might put your stuff online. Oh, yeah, I have a business online. 
Everybody don't go online. Well, sometimes people they go online and go right past your stuff. I mean, they can do the same thing if you have a storefront. They can do the same thing, you know. But you know, it's best to get out there. Uh, it says, uh, but it says some analysts say that uh, Saturn is using the wrong strategy for Japan, where the typical foreign car buyer wants to stand out from the crowd. Uh, distinctive European models accounted for almost two thirds of all imported vehicles sold in Japan in 1998. So this is some stuff about uh, Saturn. So what about a global vision? Global vision means recognizing and reacting to international international business opportunities. Being aware of threats uh, from foreign competitors in all markets and effectively using international distribution networks. So I might want to sit down again. Uh, so then we also have uh, uh, exports. Uh, goods and services produced in one country and sold in other countries. So in other words, other words, if I'm producing, say for instance, uh, I say goods and services produced in one company, a country and sold in another country. I'm producing my goods and services um, over here, wherever I'm at. Say for instance, I'm in, uh, I'm in Canada. I'm producing my goods and services in Canada, but I'm selling to, uh, I'm selling my goods and services in other, uh, in other, uh, you know, other countries and stuff. Um, and then we have imports, goods and services that are bought from other countries. So in other words, I, like I said, I'm running my car dealership and I go, I purchase, I'm purchasing my cars from, um, other countries. See, I bought my cars from other countries, but I'm selling them in the same country that I live in. So that's an import. To goods and services that are bought from other countries. Uh, so what is it? What is a floating exchange rate? A system in which prices of currency move up and down based upon the demand for and supply of the various currencies. Okay, so we term uh, absolute advantage. The situation where the country can produce and sell the product at a lower cost than any other country or when it is the only country that can provide the product. Uh, the situation where the country can produce and sell the product at a lower cost uh, than any other country or when it is the only country that can provide the product. So in other words, of uh, all the countries selling uh, products, but I can produce that same product at a lower price, then that I would have the absolute advantage. So you got a competitive advantage, you have an absolute advantage. I'm selling my cars, my cars I can produce and sell cheaper than any other car dealership around the country. Principle of com uh, comparative advantage. The principle of comparative advantage, the concept that each country should specialize and the products that it can produce most readily and cheaply and trade those products for those that other countries can produce most readily and cheaply. So in other words, I'm selling my cars and I can trade, if I can sell my cars from my, from my, car, from my car dealership cheaper than other car dealerships, then we should trade with each other. We can trade for, for they might be selling other products that's cheaper than uh, products that I can, you know, purchase. So if they sell them cheaper, I might want to buy from them. If I'm selling my car, whatever products I have, you know, I'm selling my products cheaper, then they may want to purchase from me. That is a, the principle of comparative advantage. We have free trade, uh, the policy of permitting the people of the country to buy and sell where they please without restrictions. So um, it's a policy of permitting the people of a country to buy and sell where they please without restrictions. So in other words, um, if you want to order, you want to buy stuff or you want to order something from another country, you have free trade, free trade agreement. Like we had a free trade agreement with China and Mexico. China and Mexico had a free trade agreement with the, the, the NAFTA, with the United States. Uh, protectionism. 
the policy of protecting home industries from outside competition by establishing artificial barriers such as tariffs and quotas. So you protect your home, protect your home industries from outside competitors by, you know, charging them taxes, uh, taxes, you know, quotas, reaching quotas, charging them taxes. So uh, let me see, whatever words do I have? Uh, tariff, a tax imposed on imported goods. Uh-huh. Protective tariffs, tariffs that are imposed in order to make imports less attractive to buyers than domestic products are. So, import, import quota, a limit on the quantity of a certain good that can be imported. Embargo, a total ban on imports or exports of a product. So, embargo, so they ban certain products coming in from certain countries. See, a total ban on imports or exports of a product. Imports or exports, so they put a ban, that's an embargo. So we have uh, dumping, you know, dumping. The practice of charging a lower price for a product in a foreign market than in a firm's home market. So in other words, um, you're charging uh, your customers a lower price in the foreign market, uh, you know, the char then, you know, your home market. So in other words, your, your foreign market, you're charging them a cheaper price than, than your home market, your home market customers. So I did uh, uh, on my, one of my previous videos, uh, critical thinking. I said critical thinking questions. Is it ethical for the steel industry to benefit from pricing policies and practices that it complains are unfair? How might the ethical climate of a steel producer be affected by simultaneously complaining about and benefiting from dumping? What role, if any, can government play in establishing an ethical position with regard to dumping? So let's see. Uh, I know we probably never heard of this term right here, the Maastricht Treaty, a 1993 treaty concluded by the members of the European community, now the European Union, that outlines plans for tightening bonds among the members and creating a single market, officially called the Treaty of European Union. The European Union, an organization of 15 European nations uh, that works to foster political economic integration in Europe formerly called the European Community. So the European Union, 15 European uh, nations that work to foster political and economic integration into Europe. So they would integrate means to move within in Europe, 15 European uh, nations. So let's see, uh, we have uh, contract manufacturing, joint venture, direct foreign investment. Let's talk about a contract manufacturing, the practice in which a foreign firm manufactures private label goods under a domestic firm's brand name. So uh, a, a domestic, with, domestic is within, within the country. See, a practice in which a foreign firm manufactures uh, okay, so in other words, a foreign co uh, company, in other words, you have a domestic firm within the country you live in, a country outside, a foreign, a foreign company, a company outside of your domestic uh, uh, company can um, market your, um, market your goods and services, as, in other words, under your brand name. So, but it had to be, the contract had to be that agreement. Joint venture, an agreement in which a domestic firm buys part of a foreign firm or joins with a foreign firm to create a new entity. So a joint venture, a joint venture, an agreement in which a domestic firm buys part of a foreign firm. So in other words, if I have a domestic firm within my uh, domestic area, you know where I uh, domicile at, um, I uh, I, ha I can have a domestic firm. I mean, I can have a, a foreign firm. See, a domestic firm buys part of a foreign firm. So 
I'm the domestic firm. I can buy part of that foreign firm uh, and to create a new to create a new entity. So it has to be agreements on that. That's why I call it joint venture. Uh, then we have uh, infrastructure, the basic instru the basic institutions and public facilities upon which an economy development depends. Uh -huh. cultural, diff cultural differences, that's what I talk about all the time. Central to any society is a common set of values shared by its citizens uh, that determine what is, what is socially acceptable. Culture underlies the family, educational system, religion, and social class system. The network of social organizations generates overlapping roles and status positions. These values and roles have a tremendous effect on people's preferences and thus on marketers' options. Ica Cola, a fruity greenish yellow carbonated drink, is the largest selling soft drink in Peru. Despite being described as liquid bubblegum, the drink has become a symbol of national pride and heritage. So, cultural differences. And then they got right here. Language is another important aspect of culture. Marketers must take care in selecting product names and translating slogans and promotional messages so as not to convey the wrong meaning. For example, Mitsubishi Motors had to rename its Pajero model in Spanish-speaking countries because the term refers to a, a bad activity. Toyota Motors, uh, MR2 model dropped the number two in France because the combination sounds like a French swear word. Swear word. The literal translation of Coca-Cola in Chinese characters mean uh, a bite the wax tadpole. So they had to change their names because in other countries they had different meanings for those particular names. So they had to change their names. And then we have multinational corporations. Multinational corporations, uh, corporations that move resources, goods, services, and skills across national boundaries uh, without regard to the country in which their, head, they, their headquarters are located. So in other words, uh, corporations, multinational corporations, they own corporations that own other corporations, corporations that move resources, goods, services, and skills across national boundaries without regard to to the country in which their head in which their headquarters are located. So you got uh well, multinationals. Multinationals can also shift production from one plant to another as market conditions change. Uh, finally, multinationals can often save a lot in labor costs, even in highly unionized, unionized countries. Market expansion. Study the role. Study the role of a global manager. Uh, as business becomes more global, chances are that you may become a global manager. Start learning right now what this means and if it's right for you. The life of a global manager can be hectic, as these uh, examples illustrate. As president of Double Click International, a unit of the New York Internet Advertising Company, Barry Salzman spends about 75% of his time traveling. See, that wouldn't be for me. I wouldn't want to be no global manager. I wouldn't mind being a manager, but I wouldn't want to be no global manager. I do a lot of traveling. Global managers spend proportionately more of their energy combating the sense of isolation that tends to gnaw at employees in remote uh, offices. Uh, top overseas performers at Secure Computing, a San Jose, California software developer, are treated to a dinner for two by Christine Hughes, Senior Vice President of Marketing and Business Development. Ms. Hughes supervised a 24-person staff in North and South America and Asia. One of her missions on one of her missions on trips is to combat the tendency of foreign-based employees to think the organization is U.S.-centric, she says, because they take much longer flights than a typical corporate road warrior. Global managers, global managers wind up turning airplanes into offices. So they travel so much, they had to turn their airplanes into an office, doing their little work on airplanes, taking their laptops with them and everything, I guess. So, you know. Ooh, excuse me. I wouldn't want to be no global manager, but I guess, I guess it's good money in it. What are the barriers to international trade? How do governments and institutions foster world trade? 
what our international economic communities. In international economic communities, reduce trade barriers among themselves while often establishing common tariffs and other uh, trade barriers toward non-member countries. The best known economic communities are the European Union, NAFTA, and uh, Mercosur. So let's see what else we have. So making ethical decisions and managing a socially responsible business. Making ethical decisions. So I was talking about that earlier. Uh, making ethical decisions. Uh, you running a business. Uh, ethical. Say, for instance, you, uh, you are running a business. You don't want to be dumping dangerous chemicals near people's homes in different landfills. That was in one of my, uh, my books that I, when I studied uh, business ethics at Australia University. That was one of the cases. Uh, one of the cases that was in the book. Uh, you know, they say that a company, um, I forgot what the whole case consisted of, but they would talk about how this particular company, how they would constantly dump uh, dangerous chemicals, you know, right near people's homes. You know, they may have landfills or they may have, uh, you know, you got dumpsters, trash dumpsters, trash bins, they would dump dangerous chemicals near people's homes and know that type of thing, that's unethical because that can make people sick. So, you know, so that is that one. So searching for solutions at searching for solutions at the Miami International Airport. So then I'm uh, trying to see uh, other words. Uh, then we have utilitarian a uh, philosophy that focuses on the consequences of an action to determine whether it is right or wrong. Uh, holds that an action that affects the majority adversely is morally wrong. We have justice, we have pre-conventional ethics. Just as what is considered fair according to the prevailing standards of society uh, in the 20th century and equitable distri distribution of the burdens and rewards that society has to offer. Uh, uh, let me see. Just trying to, you know, see if I can run across a different word. We have a general partnership, uh, li limited partnership, general partners, and we have limited partners. So a general partnership, a partnership in which all partners share in the management and profits. So a general partnership, you know, I'm running a general partnership. I don't have a corporation. I don't have a sole proprietorship. I have a partnership. I have a general partnership. So me and my partners will share in the uh, management and profits. A partnership in which all partners share in the management and profits. That's a general partnership. Uh, each partner can act on behalf of the firm and has limited liability for all its business obligations. We have a limited partnership. So general partnership, that is the limited one. Limited partnership, a partnership with one or more general partners who have unlimited liability and one or more limited partners whose liability is limited to the amount of the investment. So your limited partnership, you're only limited to the amount of your investment. So in other words, they can't uh, get no more out of you than you put in to <laughs> your investment. Limited general partners, uh, partners who have unlimited liability for all the firm's business obligations and who control its operations. So, you know, then the limited partners, partners whose liability for the firm's business obligations is limited to the amount of their investment. Uh, they help to finance the business but do not participate in the firm's operations. So, then we got right here advantages of corporations. You got the limited uh, liability, ease of transferring ownership, unlimited life, tax deductions, and uh, ability to attract financing. You got the S Corporation, limited liability company, LLC, that's what I always talk about, the LLC, a hybrid organization that offers the same liability and protection as a corporation, that's what I was saying too, uh -huh. but maybe tax as either a partnership or a corporation. Uh, uh. We have franchising, franchisor, uh, franchisee, and franchise agreement. Franchising, a form of business organization based on the business arrangement between a franchisor, uh, which supplies a product, concept and a franchisee. 
uh, who sell the goods or services of the franchise or in a certain geographic area. So I'm not going to read you, get into reading all that, but with Sharon, so you know, just be, I'm, at, I'm at one hour right about now, so thank you, uh, YouTubers, for joining me. Uh, um, so, you know, running your business. So this is a good book right here. This is The Future of Business. Future of Business. So this book has a lot of good stuff in it. So these are a lot of books that I had when I was, you know, taking classes in college and in university. And uh, at Strad University. So I hold on to all my books. So you might see that I, you know, present a lot of books. You know, a lot of business books, computer books. I had, I took computer uh, classes, business classes, law classes. Excuse me. Uh, so, I'm going to say thanks for joining me, YouTubers. Hope to see you back here again. Same place, same time, same channel. Hope to see you back here again. Same place. I don't know. I just feel like I wanted to do that. But <laughs> uh, same place, same time, same channel. Uh, um, uh, the Cheryl Hubbard Show. You know, hope to see you back here again. I want to provide... Uh, quality information, educational information, uh, enlightening information, um, you know, powerful information. I want to empower, I want to inspire, I want to, uh, and I want to empower, I want to inspire, I want to encourage, you know, so I want to encourage you to study. Study and read, you don't have to be in college, you know, study, read, learn some accounting, now in the basics, you know, YouTube has so much to offer. I'm so thankful for YouTube. Thank you, YouTube, for your creation in this world because it gives, you know, me and uh, millions of other, millions of others a chance to go research and learn, learn uh, these different these different things, these different terms that we, you know, may not have otherwise, you know, found out about. I mean, we can get the internet. That is, that you know, uh, Zuckerberg. That was very, uh, that was very, um, I guess I could say, very smart, very smart, a very smart creation. The internet. That used to be the opera net uh, back in the day, and it was just, it was just for, it was supposed to be in, in, within a work environment. It wasn't supposed to, you know. But it turned into a network of networks, and there's billions and trillions of people are connected to the internet today. And um, but we do have the internet for all of us that you know access it on the outside. But they do have the intranet, I N T R A N E T. That is within an organization. You know, so I guess they have their own intranet. So you know, company intranet. So if you don't work for that company, you can't access their internet, you know, so that's what that is. So internet, intranet, uh, you know, so I want to say thanks for joining me today. Glad to see you here. Uh, Cheryl Hubbard Show, and this is my 100th episode. I guess it's my 100th video, but I mean, you know, I changed the name, but it's still my 100th um uh, video, you know, I just changed the name. I did rebrand on the accounting for real, but I still would have done the same video whether the name was the same or different. So, you know, thanks for joining me. Hope to see you again. Same place, same time, same channel. The Cheryl Hubbard Show, the Cheryl Hubbard Channel. And uh, I want to concentrate on bringing you quality videos, quality information, uh, ethical information. Uh, I want to create a learning environment right here on my channel. Uh huh. I want to create a learning environment. So I want to say thanks again for joining me. And I want to see you next time right here. Same place, same time, same channel. And I did two videos a day. This is my second one. So I'm kind of tired right now. I have some other things to do around the house. So I probably won't be doing any more videos till uh, tomorrow, March the 2nd, 2020. But I may. Who knows, I may do a couple more videos today, but not right now. So I want to go pull out my uh, books and sit back and relax a little bit and put my strategy together and see, you know, um, 
what type of videos I want to come up with next. I want to come up with something enlightening, uh, educational, inspiring, like I say, empower, empowering. Uh, and um, so, you know, I just want to provide good content. So I want to say thanks for joining me and I want to probably get down with a little bit more of this uh, hood and I'll see you next time. Same place, same time, same channel. I, you know, maybe try to work on my uh, keyboard, and I do still have my, uh, I still have my guitar, so, you know, I definitely would be. So, till I see you again next time, same place, same time, same channel, and uh, hope you all have a good one. So, we'll be watching out for the news, checking out this coronavirus. Hope things get better. So, just praying to God, God, I want to thank you for waking me up this morning, starting me on my way, God. And also, God, God, I'm asking you now, cure this coronavirus. Don't let it spread around the world. Yeah, so you all have a good one.